Hey friends, welcome to my channel. I'm George and this year I'm going to enter my 38th year as a chef. Today I'm going to give you the unabridged version of everything you need to know about peppercorns. What are peppercorns? Where do they come from? Which is the most expensive peppercorn in the world? Does color make a difference? Are pink peppercorns poisonous? When should you add pepper to food? Which type of peppercorn should you use? Is pepper bad for you? Does it cause kidney stones? How long is the shelf life of pepper? What is the best way to grind it? And should you buy organic peppercorns? We're gonna focus primarily on black peppercorns. I bought 10 different varietals and I'm gonna pick my favorite three and also recommend three that will be the most universal to have in your kitchen. That's a lot. Feel free to jump around this video by clicking on the topics that interest you in the description below. Peppercorns are stone fruits or tiny droops that come from the Piper nigrum plant, which is native to the Malabar coast in India and part of the Piperaceae family. Think of a peach and its hard internal seed. That is a droop. From the same peppercorn fruit, we get three of the most common colors, black, green, and white. The most common peppercorns are black peppercorns. Sun drying causes the outer skin of the peppercorn to shrivel and turn black. Green peppercorns also come from unripened droops. They are preserved in their green state, usually by freeze drying or with sulfur dioxide. They are also canned or brined. This is a can of brined green peppercorns. They are milder in heat and have almost a fruitier taste than when they are dried and turn black. I really like the flavor that they have. They still got some heat to them, but they definitely taste more like a fruit than a pepper. Unlike black and green peppercorns, which come from unripened droops, white peppercorns come from fully ripened droops, which are red. They are soaked in water until the skin falls off, leaving just the seed, which is white. Now, red peppercorns are not the same as pink peppercorns. They can only be found stored in a brine as they are the whole ripened peppercorn droop preserved in a brine. I've never seen them and I have never been able to source them for purchase in the United States. Let me know if you have ever come across them in the comments below. Pink peppercorns come from an entirely different species, same as Szechuan peppercorns. They come from the Anacardaceae family, the same family where cashews come from. Are they poisonous? For a while, there was some controversy about pink or red peppercorns. In 1982, the United States Department of Food and Drug Administration banned the import of pink peppercorns into the country. People were experiencing swelling and anaphylactic shock from consuming them. This ban has been lifted. Most people who are allergic to pink peppercorns are also allergic to cashews as they are in the same family. Is pepper bad for you? In large quantities, it can cause indigestion or acid reflux. Like anything else in moderation, black pepper may actually be very good for you. The heat in pepper comes from piperine. The heat from say a jalapeno pepper or a chili pepper comes from capsaicin. The heat from both, it releases endorphins, which could make you eat more pepper than you should. But piperine is high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory, helps absorb nutrients like beta carotene iron better. And black pepper and turmeric together are a dynamic duo, which causes an increased absorption of curcumin, 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 a highly potent anti-aging, anti-inflammatory antioxidant. Just don't go crazy with the turmeric, a little goes a long way, and too much turmeric, especially raw like the root, is gonna make you constipated. Also, if you're looking to reduce your salt intake, pepper can often make a decent salt substitute. It can enhance the flavor of your dish without introducing sodium. Pepper particles do not bind together in your body and collect in your kidneys to form rocks because they're a hard substance. However, pepper contains higher levels of oxalates, and oxalates can cause kidney stones. So if you have a propensity towards kidney stones, more than likely your doctor will tell you to be on a low oxalate diet. Dried peppercorns unground have a long shelf life, about three to four years, especially when stored in a cool, dark location. When ground, the aromatics are released and even though the shelf life of ground pepper is still around two years, don't keep it ground. It tastes much better when it's ground fresh. A good pepper mill is a good investment, but it's also an expensive one, and not all pepper mills are created equal. Some pepper mills adjust the grind from the top. I'm not so fond of these pepper mills. If you grind pepper by twisting it back and forth, the grind size is gonna change because you're loosening and tightening the nuts, so there will be an inconsistency in your grind. I like pepper mills that do not rely on the top nut for grind size. I have had good success with the Peugeot brand of pepper mills. They adjust the grind size on the bottom, independent of the top nut, 
I have not had much success with electric pepper mills. I find them to usually break within a year. For larger quantities of ground pepper, invest in a spice grinder like this one. It will allow you to not only grind spices like pepper in large quantities, but it will also allow you to buy other whole spices that you can grind when you need them, which will greatly increase their shelf life. When you're creating a super stock, adding peppers early on is a good idea. Once all the flavors or aromatics are extracted, the pepper has served its purpose. If you're searing or grilling, the pepper on the surface of the meat or vegetable being grilled will change with the heat. Now, depending on the pepper you use, you're gonna have to adjust the flavor profile. In general, the more heat you apply to pepper, the more the aromatics change and fade. When grilling a steak, for example, I like to coat the outside of the steak with half the pepper that I normally would put on it and then add the remainder while the steak is resting after it is cooked because I like the flavor that charred peppercorns add to the steak but I also like the aromatics that fresh ground peppercorns add to the steak after it's cooked. I think this is highly subjective. In French cuisine, typically black pepper is not added to any white sauces. Now, this is not only for aesthetic reasons but white pepper lends itself to white foods, kind of how like white wine pairs better with white meat. I find white pepper to have a flavor that I really don't care for all the time. To me, it smells, well, for lack of a better description, like baby poop. But I do find sometimes that white pepper marries well in certain sauces and poultry. I almost never use it in brines. I don't like what white pepper does to the brine meat, but as a start and very, very general guideline, the darker the food, the darker the pep peppercorns you should use. But again, that is something you're going to have to experiment with, become acquainted with, and you're going to learn that through experience. Buying peppercorns in bulk dramatically decreases the price. Since they have a long shelf life, it makes sense to buy in larger quantities. This is two ounces of gourmet peppercorns known as Indian Telecherry peppercorns. They are some of the best you can get. These two ounces, or 56 grams, cost seven US dollars, that's $3.50 an ounce. Now, if you were to buy 16 ounces or 453 grams, the price is 17 US dollars or 1.06 per ounce. Same peppercorns, one third the price. If you are a long-term viewer of this channel, you know that I only use organic herbs and spices. They just taste better and are clearly not laden with chemicals. Most importantly, organic spices are not irradiated, a process that kills bacteria using gamma rays. Now, based on a few published reports, chemical levels in peppercorns are within safety levels. But when you buy organic peppercorns, those chemicals aren't there. And because by nature, peppercorns are expensive, organic peppercorns are about the same price. So it is not costing more to go organic. When buying green peppercorns, if you are concerned with your food containing sulfur dioxide, then you will be better off with organic peppercorns because green peppercorns are exposed to more chemicals than black when they are being preserved. No, they are not. Focusing strictly on black peppercorns, each varietal has subtle and different flavor profiles. Here's what I suggest you do. Make a one-time investment and buy different varieties of peppercorns in small quantities and taste them. See which ones you like. Here I have purchased 10 different types of black pepper. I'm gonna rate them in order from my personal favorite to least favorite flavor. I'm gonna pick my favorite top three based on taste. And I'm also gonna pick the top three that I feel will be most universally used in the average kitchen. Let me start off by saying that all 10 of these were absolutely delicious and they weren't ridiculously removed from one another. It wasn't like, oh my God, this one is extraordinary. This one is terrible. They all tasted pretty much like black pepper, but they all had their nuances. My favorite, hands down, was the Kampot, the Cambodian Kampot. Absolutely delicious. That one had a significantly better taste than everything else. And the second favorite was the Tela Cherry. The Indian Tela Cherry was really, really delicious. Absolutely enjoyed and loved that one as well. My third favorite was the Vietnamese black pepper, the Saigon. I really liked that pepper a lot. It had some unique 
flavor characteristics, almost like that. I think these would go really, really, really well with fish and seafood. It was kind of had it was like a citrusy flavor to it, and the heat was really mild on that. I really enjoyed that. Now, as far as a utilitarian pepper that you can have that would go in your kitchen with everything, I'm going to go again, say the Campot, the Tella Cherry. And then a third one, I think it would be a toss-up, believe it or not, between the Brazilian, which I thought also was really nice, very, very close to the Vietnamese Saigon, the Brazilian peppercorns. And, you know, the Costco one tasted kind of like a blend of everything. They don't tell you what peppercorns they use here, but it was pretty damn good. I can't complain about that. So I'm also going to give you a list of all the different heats that each one of these kind of left in my mouth. I really don't like buying multicolor peppercorn blends. First of all, the manufacturer determines what amounts of each type I use, not me. I like to be in control. And like I said, in my cooking, I use white peppercorn sparingly and intentionally. I do not like them mixed with black peppercorns. Now, the thumbnail of this video mentions a rare, ridiculously expensive pepper known as ahi charapita. It's not a peppercorn. It's a delicious chili pepper. It is easy to grow and very cheap if you grow it and dry it yourself. The most expensive peppercorn I have come across is Campot. Nowhere near ahi charapita, but it will set you back about $80 per pound or $176 per kilo. Is it worth it? Yes. As a chef, it is delicious and unique. At home, maybe pick up a couple of ounces for the experience. Here is my added bonus cooking tip when using peppercorns in your recipe. Piperine, the heat in peppercorns, dominates the flavor profile pepper imparts to food. So the less pepper you use, the more pronounced the aromatic, so less will give you more. If you create an appealing taste, always leave your guests looking for that taste in the next forkful. If you bash them over the head with a flavor, no matter how great it is, they will become overwhelmed and they're gonna grow tired of the dish before they finish it. I hope this video answered all of your questions about peppercorns. If not, ask away in the comments below. Please become an active member of this channel by helping me to make it grow. Just hit that like button. And if you do subscribe, click the notification bell. Otherwise, the YouTube algorithm will pass you by when I release a new video. I do appreciate you. Cheers.